It's Monday, September 12th, 2022. Coming up on the program today, the Queen's death. A result of some Illuminati shit? Or is it because she got fucked too hard by a horse? We've got some conspiracy theories. Plus, smuggling toothpaste leads to a pussy itch and a bus driver threatening to shoot up kindergartners. All this for your voicemails today. This is the Lord's house. This ain't no damn bath house. <laughs> I drink semen. Feed my fucking sickness. It's just a fun thing. We're surrounded by freaks. <laughs> yes, Tim Henson, kicking off a new week of shows right here on Distorted View Daily, the podcast that brings you the weird and wonderful and despicable and gross, vile, sometimes illegal shit. If you ever wondered what a woman gargling horse cum sounded like, this is the right podcast for you. Ting. You have found your home. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Twisted Anus. Those were the boys you heard at the top of the show singing about their nice cock. They are an Australian band. Looks like they just started recently. Uh, They released an album in 2020. It is available on Spotify. I urge you all to check it out. Now, well, you know, the reason why I found them, I I just stumbled uh, across their work when searching for Tonetta. I thought maybe Tonetta was publishing some new music and it was available on Spotify. That was not the case. Instead, happy little accident. I found Twisted Anus, but that's not the only artist I found. No, no. Oh, there's so much good music on that Spotify. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name of uh, the, the the next artist I found. I think it's okay because they they want people to listen to their music. And how are you supposed to talk about them if you can't call them by their name? Nig Pro. If you're like me, uh, my first thought was, oh, this is like professional N words. You know how like there's an iPhone Pro and a Mac Pro. This is just like a higher-end version of the N-word. Made with higher-grade material, maybe? I don't know. Regardless of their name, uh, they produce some fantastic music. Uh, This one is called uh, Gay... (laughs) I'm trying to figure out what words I can say and what words I can't. Gay N-word, but it's not like a hard R. It's the A. Uh, (laughs) Gay N-word hours. This for all them gay niggas out there, dedicated to niggas who suck and fuck their homies on a daily basis. Like, is he singing about me? Because sometimes when, you know, when, when people say the N word, it's like it's more generalized. But sometimes they're specifically referring to, you know, uh, fellow black people. And of course, all them thick niggas with big tickers. <laughs> oh, that's not me. Nick Pro records in this bitch, nigga. Bitch, I'm sticking five cocks in my ass. One, two, three, four, five cocks. Gonna blast cock from an at last. Hot cocks gonna smash my ass. Grip fast, bust nut in his ass. Suck nut, fuck butt, lick dick, lick piss. Gay nigga slay nigga, dick <laughs> cheese, dick bliss. Bust nut, dumb cock, pinch this, tip bitch. Gay nigga, gay dick is bitch, please lick this. Naming controversies aside, this shit is fire, right? Uh, you can't uh, deny that. Rubbing my tip, I'm sucking his 
Even the chorus is catchy. Well, that's uh, Nig Pro. Before we move on, I do have to mention a couple of other great uh, titles. Uh, N-Words in my butthole. Hey, yo, where my dildo at? Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in. Niggas in. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in. Niggas in. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in my butthole. Niggas in my butthole. It, it, that's pretty much the song. Even though, I, you know, and I hate to critique it, uh, it it's a little repetitive. Uh, it has still racked up 1.3 million plays. I don't know if they were trying to recreate the success of the butthole song, but uh, they did release a, a song called N Words in My Dick Hole. Pretty much the same song. Anyway, I'm a fan. I urge you all to check them out. I don't know what you call this type of music, homo trap, fag wave. There seems to be a lot of it, though. I, I remember many years ago, we played a, you know, a, a, a kind of like a rap song that was uh, very pro-gay, pro-cocksucking. And, uh, I, you know, it was an outlier. It was strange. I don't want to say we're um, we're hitting the mainstream here, but we're getting close. Uh, here's one more. This is Lil Throat Goat singing In My Mouth. I put the penis in my mouth. Look at the dick. I got those cells. Shout out to everyone listening to Distorted View daily with their windows down in their car. Congratulations, everyone around you thinks you're sucking dick. There is some very pro... I, I would say this goes beyond pro-gay. This is like aggressively gay music. Sexually aggressive Music to rape to, really. All right, listen, let's move on. I did mention the uh, iPhone Pro. Now I'm not sure why I mentioned it. I know I uttered those were Oh, Nig Pro, right. Did you guys watch the Apple keynote speech? I'm a big tech nerd, and uh, I, I use all Apple products, really, for what I do. Very important that I play these gay cock-sucking rap songs on a $3,000 laptop computer. The speakers really are great. Anyway, every September, Apple does a keynote where they uh, release the new iPhones for the year. Not just iPhones. They do like Apple Watch and AirPods and all that crap, right? For the past several years, Apple's been really um, uh, into health tracking and safety. The watch can do EKGs, tell if you're going into AFib. It can track your cycle. You know, menstrually speaking, if, you, if you've got a uterus or whatever, it can do ovulation tracking now. If it detects you have fallen or in a crash, yada, yada, yada. Now it can connect to satellites, even if you don't have a cell connection. The whole thing going on there. Well, in one of their propaganda videos <laughs> during the keynote, they uh, assembled a bunch of people who have uh, been in an emergency situation. And thanks to their Apple products, they lived. They had the actual people who were in these emergency situations read the letters that they sent to Tim Cook or Apple or whatever. And some of them were quite nutty. Like there's one guy who was stuck in a cabin with a bear. Now, I noticed something while this was going on and uh, I, I didn't bring it up on the show. But then I was listening to um, uh, the Verge cast, which is if you've ever been to the Verge, it's like a technology blog. They have a podcast. And one of the guys mentioned how weird this was. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. This was fucking bonkers. Now, here's a little bit from the video. I was viewing a movie with my wife in her family room. I was having lunch at one of the spiciest restaurants in San Diego. It was a typical summer night. We looked around the corner and a bear was staring right at me. I was doing what we call a dump and return when I slipped head first into the compactor. I was skating on a frozen river when the ice gave out. Okay, what's so crazy about this video is here are these people who have been through some traumatic events. There's a guy who fell inside of his trash truck. He's a garbage man that fell into the compactor. In the video, though, they have him positioned. So he's standing behind a garbage truck. The camera is inside the truck looking out at him. Now, I don't know if it's a set if it's a green screen situation. At one point, they actually have the garbage truck compactor start closing while the guy is standing behind it. Way to give these people uh, some horrible flashbacks, Apple. I looked down at my Apple Watch and my heart rate was 187 beats per minute. I By the way, that's nothing, honey. 
I got you beat by like 20. I was pushing past 200 beats a minute when I had my incident. I'm like an old man now who embellishes his story. Like back when this happened, I don't know when it was 2014 or something, I was probably like, freaks, my heart was beating at 150 beats a minute. Now we're up to past 200. Give it a few years. Bet you I can crack the 300 beats per minute mark. And then there's like silence, right? And, and you see some snow. Dear Apple, my dad was flying our small plane to Vermont. I was asleep in the back seat. I woke up when we were crashing into the tops of the trees. They got a real plane crash victim to read her, her letter that she wrote to Apple, but she's sitting in a crashed <laughs> plane, <laughs> right? It's like wreckage. This can't be a real set, right? The plane broke into six pieces and we were miles away from civilization in the freezing cold. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, my Apple Watch started ringing. It was a Candy Crush notification. You know what I thought of when I first watched this video? Here's this girl who was in a uh, near death plane crash. She fell from the sky in a tin can and survived. Plane exploded, all that, right? She's got no problem sitting in a recreation. Meanwhile, last week on the podcast, I was playing audio uh, from this Yale student who had to give up a woodworking class because the saws were too loud. She can't even handle a full course load. She's like, first period is gender studies. Second class of the day was trans rights in America. Then I went to lunch and then I went to the queer center for a, you know, drag queen brunch or something. You know, like, wow, it was the weirdest fucking day for someone who's in an Ivy League school. Then she's got like an emotional support cat. She's got OCD, uh, PTSD, CPTSD, whatever the hell that is. She's autistic. She can only eat soft foods <laughs> because she calls a quesadilla her safe food. Like it was just insane. Just a fragile, broken person who can't fucking cope with real life. And then we got this bitch who crashed her plane into a deserted forest. And not only did she live to talk about it, she's sitting in a set piece designed to look like the crash, and she's fine with it all. By the way, I think this girl is exaggerating a little bit. If she was truly in the middle of nowhere, she would not have cell reception. Who's building cell towers where no one lives for miles and miles, you know? Maybe she was looking the wrong way. Like she was walking and walking through the forest, but if she would have just turned around, 50 feet to the south, she would have found an interstate and across the berm, like a Target, a shopping mall. Let's not say she was in the middle of nowhere, but whatever. Okay, Apple saved her life. I wonder how much these people got paid. They had to have gotten paid something, right? We're going to sit you down in the middle of uh, some fake plane wreckage and you're going to read your letter. I hope at least, you know, Apple gave her an iPad. iPad Pro, not one of those cheap ones. Could see Apple pulling that stunt. We're going to give you an iPad and it's one of those uh, like the $300 cheapo ones. Anyway, I just thought that was all very odd. Uh, on Friday, as we were ending the week, we found out that uh, the Queen died. It was very sad. I was so excited that uh, Queen Elizabeth decided to come on Distorted View Daily. It was her first post-death interview. She was in high spirit. She came with Satan. We learned a lot. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, th this information will get out eventually anyway. So he here's what happened. Uh, so you signed a contract with Satan to give Meghan Markle breast cancer. And ovarian cancer. Oh. <laughs> and rectal cancer. <laughs> it will spread everywhere. Oh, my. Just like our once great empire. We shall call this cancer her royal army. It will advance to her labial walls. Pussy lips will fall off. <laughs> Breast cancer will spread to the throat, esophagus, and brain. Guessing the cancer won't find much there. <laughs> this old broad's pretty hardcore, huh? Tell me about it. I like your style, honey. Yes, well, no one comes between me and my grandkids, especially some no-talent American actress whose only credits, by the way, are ugh, basic cable. I mean, we knew the queen did not like Prince Harry's wife, but I didn't know she would go this far for revenge. 
just a, a bombshell revelation. You want to hear the whole interview, the whole the whole stupid bit? Uh, check out the Friday Sideshow exclusive podcast. Sign up for the Sideshow uh, right now, superfreaksideshow.com. Nice little plug there. Now, the last thing I want to do is call Satan and the Queen herself big fat liars. But people seem to have their own inside information and theories on what actually happened. It didn't go down the same way that uh, the Queen told us, at least... Not according to Gail Cord Schuler, also known as Gabrielle Chana, ex-president of the United States and the head of the Church of Gail. According to her, she's got the real scoop on how Queen Elizabeth died. Let's take a listen. All right, um, as most of you know... She sounds very somber, doesn't she? Queen Elizabeth has passed away. And I wanted to tell you what really happened to her. It's not what you're hearing in fake news. Bitch, don't you start with me. I don't know if that's like a dig at me or what. As we all know, that is fake news. Um, She was murdered by the Jesuits. Of course. The Jesuits forced her doctor (laughs) to put her on blood thinners. I could have guessed the Jesuits were behind this. The Jesuits are behind everything. From semen-filled bukkake bombs... To cloning an evil version of Gail's husband, Brent Spiner. Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. Queen Elizabeth was my number one royal fan. Oh. She studied my family history and my genetic profile like a total fangirl. And she made love to royal horses in honor of Catherine the Great. Because I'm literally half Catherine the Great. There's a lot to unpack in just that one statement. Gabrielle Channa is half Catherine the Great. The Queen is fucking horses. I don't even want to ask what she was doing with those corgis of hers. Her historical research showed that that, uh, Catherine the Great liked to make love to horses. The Jesuits knew um, that, that Queen Elizabeth's vaginal tissues had been conditioned to accept horse penises but that a combination of horse penises and blood thinners would be lethal. You never see that warning on medication bottles. Warning, do not have sex with horses while using this medication. Warfarin may deteriorate pussy walls. Horse cocks will just pop right through them. Prince Andrew was there when she died. She had tasked Prince Andrew with helping stroke the horse penises to make them excited for her. And he would lick the horse balls while while the horses thrust into her. That's a close-knit family right there. And uh, she apparently needed very large penises. I have a hard time believing that my mom would ever ask me to be a horse fluffer for her. Tim, I need Mr. Apples to fuck me. But I can't stroke him to get him hard because of the arthritis in my hands. Why don't you get down there and blow that horse cock? Get it nice and hard for me and then, like, position it right between my legs. Aim it for my pussy hole. Be a good son. Man, the royal family is disgusting. There's some dark shit going on here, according to Gabrielle Channa. Um, and Prince Andrew was always very helpful to his elderly mom. Mm-hmm. He would lick all the horse semen from her vagina after to make sure that she wouldn't get a rash afterwards. Poor Prince Andrew. He is feeling so guilty about this. You see, he was the one that guided the horse into her when she was on the blood thinners. Mm. Well, he didn't know, you know. And um, he was licking the horse's balls and masturbating when the horse made its big thrusting motions and ejaculated. Wow, this really mirrors the Mr. Hand situation in Washington State. You know, history is doomed to repeat itself. The blood thinners made her vaginal skin so thin and weak that the horse blasted all the way through and its <laughs> penis came out of her mouth. I just have to say this. If you're a new listener to Distorted View Daily, you've got to be very confused at this very moment. I guess I should have explained who Gabrielle Chana is. Yes, she's our ex-president, but she's also a nutcase. I mean, you know, she's got mental problems. I guess that should go without saying at this point. She's got people on the internet that uh, like trolls that will kind of befriend her. They're kind of nice to her, but they they make her believe crazy shit like this. But what we need to understand is that she died doing what she loved. <laughs> and uh, we have decided 
to honor her for thinking so highly of me that she was willing to do this in what she thought was a way to honor me. Getting fucked by horses was a way to honor you? Oh, because you're part Catherine the Great, and, right? And um, we have decided that we're going to create an automaton of her. And I'm going to let Brent decide based on reads of... Again, Brent Spiner, who she believes she's in a relationship with. Prince Andrew and... Look, she goes on for 25 minutes or so. Or so. Okay, fast in forward. closing, I would just like to say, Andrew, we're going to be bringing your mother back as an automaton. A young okay. yep. Elizabeth with a very supple vagina. That's the important thing. And she's you're going to have a dad. Every son wants their mom to have a nice, soft, supple, tight pussy hole. All right. Thank you very much, Gabrielle Channa. We're not done yet, though, with the queen. There are other theories out there. Hi, Galileo2333. Yes, the internet's preeminent pedophile, Galileo2333, is back. He thinks we can find a lot of clues about the queen's death in the numbers. The date she died, how old she was. Hi, Galileo2333. The number 17 is Q. Uh, yeah, Q is the 17th letter. And um, Ohio is a 17th state. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Why are you bringing Ohio into this? Um, yeah, you know, the funeral music for the queen, they're saying it's going to be haunted dance hall. Um, yeah, and, and remember, yeah, dancing queen. Uh, yeah, and now the dance hall is haunted, you know, like, you know, dead. I love amped up Galileo 2333. I've never seen him this energetic. It's awesome because nothing makes sense. He's like, hi, <laughs> hi, Galileo 2333. Ohio is the 17th state. The 17th letter is Q, Q, queen, dead queen, dancing queen, ABBA. ABBA is Swedish, Swedish meatballs, Ikea. Ikea is a four letter word. D is the fourth letter. D, dead queen, D, Q. In summation, I believe we should uh, make fucking four year olds legal. Thank you. Um, and 96 uh, was the year of the Doom Blame Massacre, um, you know, a school shooting. And they got all the handguns banned in the United Kingdom in 1996. And now the Queen dies at 96. So, uh, yeah, uh, 17. And, you know, think of Helena Ramsey. That's a girl that died at Stoneman Douglas. She was 17 years old and she was born in Port Portsmouth, England. Um, yeah. And, you know, how Uvalde, Texas, you know, the Robb Elementary School is connected with Sandy Hook. And, you know, with uh, Stoneman Douglas and all the other school shootings, um, you know, yeah. Because all that, you know, they had, like, secret operatives, the CIA operatives that go in and shoot up the schools and they you know, make up a story for the media about, uh, yeah, like false flag operations like they did with 9-11. Someone asked Galileo, can you somehow link the Queen's death to 9-11 and six degrees or less? How about linking the Queen's death to Kevin Bacon? Um, you know, an inside job, you know, made up the story that was some crazy guy with a gun or some terrorist, uh, but really it was a, you know, a CIA program that set it up and did it. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, all the school shootings are connected, and, um, you know, Rob Elementary, and the queen was wearing the green dress, and that goes, the green dress goes with the green converse. Uh, yeah, the shoes, yeah, you know, the chessboard, you know, you always put the queen on the same, uh, you know, square that matches the color shoes she's wearing. Uh, yeah, you know, so, so yeah, green, you know, green shoes that go with the green dress, oh, right. like okay. they had the queen wearing. Uh, uh, yeah, so. I hate to say this, but uh, Gabrielle Chenna makes more sense than this guy. You know, there's a connection there with the school shootings and Uvalde and, you know, that and the Converse shoes. Uh, yeah, so all, a lot of this stuff is connected. They, they plan this and, and set up. No, I'm sorry. I think it's more believable that a horse pierced Queen Elizabeth's cunt and she choked on its dick. That's how she died. Had nothing to do with 9 11. Crazy man. All right. Uh, so there you go. Just some interesting Queen Elizabeth death theories slash conspiracies. Finally, before we get into the news today, store employees have caught a shoplifter. In this clip, they are refusing to let this woman leave the store. They have locked the doors and they're standing in front of them. They're going to wait for the police to get here. Now, the woman who was accused of shoplifting, she has a bold defense. Take a listen. No, I'm missing. I'm not opening the door. Come on, Ray. Please get out. Can you please call the police? I'm going to call the police. Well, y'all call the police because I'm telling you, look. You said I stole something, I put something down here, baby. I was digging in my tail. That's what I was doing. I was digging down here. I'm going to show you. I was digging. I got a pad on. I ain't putting nothing down here. Yes, she's, uh, she keeps pointing to her crotch. She apparently had an, an itchy pussy. I was digging down here. Have you let a horse fuck you down there recently? Maybe your walls are compromised. I was digging down here. I'm going to show you. I was digging. I got a pad on. I ain't putting nothing down here. Now y'all finna get in trouble. And show the 
the police the camera. I was digging in my jail. That's what I was doing. Digging. You finna go to jail. I was digging. I got a hole I want to show you. Man, I, man, what, what's good? I, I'm recording this one so you can have for your uh, evidence. But please keep recording and please send that to me, boo. Because mm -hmm. I already know why she's doing it. Mm -hmm. She don't like me because she likes to never hustle the man mm -hmm. before hustle. I don't know if this woman is really filming her for the lady's protection and for evidence. But that's a good way to deflect because that woman was about to get angry. Like, why are you filming me? Just lie and be like, I'm, I'm doing this for you. I'm trying to help you. So you have evidence. You can show the cops. Yeah, these employees are ridiculous. Meanwhile, she's on Facebook Live racking in the likes. Like, I'm selling this motherfucker to viral hog or whatever. Mm -hmm. All about her ugly behind mm -hmm. Billy. Girl, Billy Jean, girl. Gene Davis, uh, mm -hmm. the, all about a man. Don't you dare bring Gina Davis into this. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Mm -mm -mm. That I ain't messed with in over 10 years. Baby, move. Baby, move, Hello. baby. Hello. Baby, Hello. move, Hello. please. Hello. The police taking forever to get him. They coming. No, you need to move from this door. You're locking me in here to my stove. So what did I steal? What did I steal? What did I steal? Why was you digging down there, ma'am? Because I'm out there and my coochie was itching. And I have a right to scratch it because I'm grown. And I have a whole damn pen, a lot of pad well, on. It didn't look like you were scratching out. I know what I was doing, baby. There ain't nothing down there, is it? Is there something down there? Draw! Is this real? <laughs> like, I can't believe people like this exist. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, we've done this for so long. We know people like this exist. They on the way. It don't matter. Y'all finna get in trouble because ain't nothing down there. Like, nothing ain't even down there but a damn pad. They accuse me of stealing. And she, and listen, I'm going to tell you like this. They finna get sued. I'm about to put my hands on them and go to jail. I'm trying to put my hands on them. What do you guys think? I'm kind of starting to believe her that she's not stealing anything. First of all, there's only so much you can stuff inside your pussy. I'm trying to put my hands on you. Baby, you listen, I'm gonna tell you like this. Please move. This is really the worst kind of video because I there's no closure, right? It just sort of ends in the middle. And um, I've tried to look up to see what happened. I don't know if this woman was stealing something if the police ever came you ain't seen nothing in my you seen me who walked by with i had a toothpaste looking at it and then you walked back by when i was digging in my tail and you thought i put something in there that's what it was no, man. but now y'all finna get in trouble all because of a man this little girl been there did, did, did never like me never like me i ain't even know you work here i wouldn't even came here I'll keep my eyes out. If we get an update, you'll be the first to know. Uh, all right. And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist. To the fucked up news. Right up. If you like Distorted View Daily, please consider supporting the show. Become a member of the Sideshow. That is our member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs from the very beginning in December 2004 to now. Thousands of past programs to listen to. More importantly, every week I do brand new Sideshow exclusive episodes, typically on Tuesday and Thursday. This week should be no different. That means tomorrow's episode is going to be exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Superfreaksideshow.com memberships are very inexpensive. Only $6.99 a month, even less, when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. They'll bring that monthly price down to like 50 some dollars a month. Not a bad deal at all. Superfreaksideshow.com. Also, don't forget, you can get new Sideshow exclusive episodes. If you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts, there are options to subscribe right in those apps. And uh, finally, we've got that Patreon account. Patreon.com slash Distorted View. You can pledge as little as a dollar over there. Every little bit helps. Just another way to help support the show. All right. Uh, three very quick stories now. First up. We've talked about Anthony Lafredo before. You may not recognize the name. If you saw a picture of him, though, holy shit, you'll have nightmares for a fucking week. He refers to himself as the Black Alien Project. He, uh, he has tattooed pretty much every inch of his body, and he's now moving on to some extreme... Extreme! Modification, not just modifications, removals. Like, he removed his nose. The... All that remains are like holes. It's, uh, it, it, I mean, it's bizarre. An extreme body modification fan has just hinted at his next procedure. Anthony, of course, is on a quest to achieve an extraterrestrial image. 
Take a look at the chapter artwork if you want a good idea what he's going for here, what he already is. The Frenchman fucking frogs. Uh, the Frenchman has inked his eyeball and covered himself head to toe in tats with various implants. Now, Anthony, who also has a split tongue, has left fans speculating on his future plans. In an Instagram post to his 1.3 million followers, he shared an image of two legs with one chopped in half. Hmm, what could that mean? It's not exactly cryptic. His caption read, I will be ready one day. Black Alien Project Evolution 45%. Black Alien Project Re-Evolution 6%. That part's a little more cryptic. He obviously wants one of his legs gone, right? And you know, what's great about that is there are multiple ways to go about it. You can have it done surgically. You can saw it off yourself. And then, of course... I've injected my knee with uh, my feces, 120 cc's under my kneecap. Just liquefy it and pump it in. Yeah, that was the whole purpose of injecting his knee with feces. He wanted that leg removed and no one was helping him. So he thought, you know what? I'm going to infect it. I'm going to I'm going to shoot up some poop into my leg and hopefully it'll just fall off after that. It kind of worked, I believe, if I remember correctly. And it's been a long time since I've seen this guy. If I remember correctly, uh, the poop caused his leg to <laughs> get it like a bad infection. The infection spread and then doctors had to amputate his leg. So, he, you know, he got his amputation. All right. Uh, despite chopping off two of his fingers. So. This guy is uh, no stranger to amputations. Uh, despite chopping off two of his fingers, the tattoo fanatic has faced criticism since revealing plans to amputate one of his legs. The post racked up uh, over 53,000 likes and hundreds of comments. One person wrote, dude, don't fucking do it. I mean, yeah, it's a permanent thing. But this guy, you know, he's already cut off a couple of his fingers. He knows what it's like to have a body part and then and then get rid of it. If he was going to experience regret, he would have experienced it with the fingers, and I'm sure he would have thought about that when, you know, when considering removing his leg. I think he's, he's dead set on the idea. Most of the time, I would, I would agree with the person who's like, dude, don't cut it off. Just pretend that you don't have a leg. Just hop on one foot for a while. But this guy's been tattooing his entire body and doing body modifications for years and years and years. This isn't just something he's doing on a... <laughs> Whim. While another person added, there are lines in This Is Crossing It. And no, not in a good way. I'm looking at a picture of this guy. Oh, it's, it's vile. But uh, he's also done something to his teeth, which should come as a surprise to no one. He's got white. Well, I mean, he's got. No, he did something to his teeth. Too. Like he's filed them into points, kind of. It's not like vampire teeth or anything. It's not that pointy. But what I'm looking at is the color. I think he's injecting his teeth somehow with uh, with blue dye or they're painted or something. A third person wrote, you want to actually disable yourself? A fourth person said, interesting. It's your life, your body, the one leg project. He previously admitted his transformation has been hard for his mother as he's changed so much. When I went home for Christmas after, um, you know, not seeing my family for a year you know, due to COVID or whatever, um, my mom nearly broke down in tears because my hair was long. I can't imagine what this guy's mom like. You removed your nose. You don't. You don't have. <laughs> you don't have a nose anymore. You're missing fingers. Your entire body's tattooed. All right. Uh, despite the initial shock, the black alien now has a positive relationship with his family members. Uh, previously, the tattoo addict revealed he can't get a job. Well, no, because people judge his extreme looks. You had to take that into consideration when you started this. Quote, well, this type of change, it's not just a tattoo. It's something bigger. Again, I, you know, I, I think removing your nose is a bigger deal than uh, cutting off your leg. I'm sorry. With my fa at least you, know, you can get a prosthetic leg. Uh, with my family, I can't find a job. There's lots of negative stuff. Again, I am reminded of the uh, anti-AIDS PSA. You brought this on yourself. You brought this on yourself. All right. Uh, second story we have for you. Look at here. We got one from our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Florida. 
Our most fucked up state. Every day in every way. A Newport Ritchie police corporal has lost his job after an internal investigation confirmed allegations of sexual misconduct raised by a 17-year-old girl. Hi, Galileo 2333. Yeah, we summoned him once again. According to the Newport Ritchie Police Department, former police corporal Bobby Lubrido, which sounds like libido, right? 43 is not facing any criminal charges stemming from the allegation that he, what? He's not facing criminal charges stemming from the allegations that he first engaged in inappropriate and explicit conversations while looking at naked photos of the girl on her cell phone before groping her butt and breasts. I'm guessing this is a girl that he, like, pulled over at a traffic stop or something? According to an internal inf- uh, affairs report, uh, the probe turned up enough information for Newport Ritchie Police Chief Kim Bogart to dismiss the man, determining that his actions in this matter were a violation of numerous department rules, regulations, and departmental procedures, and that those improper and unbecoming actions have absolutely affected your reputation. Lubrido worked for the agency for five years and had no previous disciplinary issues. Well, let's uh, let's get into the actual incident here. I want to know what this guy did. Apparently, this all happened on July 13th. The girl, who has not been publicly named by police, you know, because of her age, probably, had recently been deemed a runaway when she, ooh, vulnerable, my favorite type of victim. You can make them do all sorts of things. They're thirsty. They're hungry. They'll give you a blowjob for a sandwich. All right, so this runaway girl was spotted by a detective off Ginny Drive. Uh, The detective took the girl to Morton Plant North Bay Hospital for a checkup, then arranged to have Labrito take her to the Juvenile Assessment Center. So far, so good. According to the report, the girl asked Labrito to turn the radio to a specific music channel, and he placed her cell phone on his charger in the front seat at her request. Okay. When they arrived at the jail, however... Labrito was told that uh, he was missing signatures on her medical clearance paperwork, which meant that he and the girl had to drive back to the hospital. In his patrol car, Labrito again placed the girl's phone on his charger, but this time asked for the password to access the phone. Bad idea. Never give the police your cell phone password. So naive. She's just a child. See, the girl gave it to him, but said she was surprised when he started to look at her photo gallery and watching videos of her twerking while making comments about her ass. The girl told detectives Labrito admitted that he was, quote, really trying to see what your breasts look like. It's amazing how quickly guys will just turn into complete criminal creeps. Like, there, it was like a, like a, a quick turn. Boom, right? Like he was fine driving her to the uh, juvenile detention center. He was playing the music she wanted. Then she had to get back in his car. Betcha he saw, like, he got a good look at her in the juvenile center. And his mind started wandering, right? And then when they were like, oh, you got to go back to the hospital with her and get some more signatures. He realized he was going to be alone with her, you know, for a little bit longer. And his horny level reached 100. Also, he likes rape. He likes rape. All right. The girl told detectives Labrito admitted that he was trying to see what the breasts looked like. Uh, Eventually uh, logged into her Snapchat account where he found a photo of the juvenile's bare breasts. He became a real detective there, didn't he? Tits and pussy will turn any guy into a world-class hacker. Start thinking with your dick, you can break into the mainframe. Labrito then took a photo of the picture of the tits with his own phone and continued looking at the naked image while driving back to the hospital. The whole time he was making sexually explicit comments as he drove. According to the report, the police corporal was so distracted by the photos that (laughs) <laughs> that he hit a deer while driving, uh, which was corroborated by dash cam footage and a phone call he made to the agency to report that he hit a deer. Labrito then arrived at the hospital and obtained the signature needed for the girl's medical clearance. He let her eat half of his sandwich. I knew there was a sandwich involved. He let her eat the sandwich without handcuffs outside of his cruiser. The girl told investigators she engaged the police officer in sexually explicit banter, hoping he would let her go. He assured her that his body-worn camera was turned off and the camera's audio recorder in his vehicle wouldn't capture their encounter. The girl told detectives that Labrito told her that sandwich wasn't free and then groped her bottom as he cuffed her hands behind her back and placed her into the back seat. The girl said that he then lifted her shirt and bra and groped her breasts. 
as if that wasn't bad enough, right? It continues. The girl told investigator that Labrito then pulled up her mom's photo on his in-vehicle computer and asked if she would be interested in having a threesome, to which the girl said no, and probably ew. I could totally see this police officer calling up the mom and be like, uh, if you ever want to see your runaway daughter again, <laughs> you'll have a threesome with her and me. While there was no audio recording from the incident captured, uh, there was some video and it's and it lines up with what the girl was saying, like her sweater was lifted up. Librito, though, denied the girl's allegations in an interview with investigators. Quote, when I told him his testimony was inconsistent with the video evidence, he replied, yeah. Librito did not respond to three phone calls from the local news seeking comment for the story. He's, I guess, too busy looking for a new job. He'll be a used car salesman. They always become used car salesmen after like a, a sex scandal. I told you that a teacher in my high school uh, was accused of some stuff. Boom. Next thing you know, he's, he's selling used Chevys. I would say, you know, if you are, you know, if you're young and you're thinking about a career in uh, car sales, you might as well just go ahead and start groping people. You're going to end up there anyway. Might as well have a little fun, right? Fast track that career goal. All right, final story we have for you today. This is a short one from Utah. Two bus drivers have been placed on administrative leave this week for how they responded to students telling them that they made a wrong turn. To be fair, it's super annoying when little kids correct you. A parent of a student at Dry Creek Elementary School sent a video on Friday that their child recorded while riding the bus home that afternoon. Uh, if one more person says, where are we going? I am going to shoot them. <laughs> the driver is heard saying on the bus intercom in the video. Oh, I might have a copy of that. Hold on here. What the wait, wait, wait. She's actually in the toy. person says, where are we going? I'm going to shoot them. Okay, now listen. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, sit down and be well, kids are really annoying on the bus, too. I like at the very beginning, the kid's like, what the freak, man? What the freak? What the freak? She's not even toy. She's actually in a toy. I got to get home by 3 p.m. That's when fucking General Hospital starts, and I don't want to miss it. Did I say 3 p.m.? I meant 3. 3 p.m. I'd be like, you, you stupid kid. You can't even talk properly telling me well, what I'm doing wrong with the turn. The turn. What the freak? She's actually a, toy. a spokesman for the Alpine School District sent in a statement to the local news, quote, we are aware of a situation on a bus today. The employee is on administrative leave pending an investigation. Oh, come on. She wasn't going to shoot anyone. Although when it comes to elementary schools, you know, you can never be too sure. We strongly condemn any threatening action or language directed towards others. We expect all employees to create safe and nurturing environments free of verbal or physical threats. Appropriate action will be taken, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the bus happened to be going past the Alpine School District Transportation West office in Saratoga Springs when it happened. Just two days prior, the local news received another video taken by a student on a bus where the driver screamed at the kids on board who were telling her she was going the wrong way. I know, okay? Shut up! I'm going to turn around, okay? Shut up! She said. The Toole County School District, where that happened, said the driver was a substitute and a spokesperson confirmed that the driver became frustrated and screamed at them when the kids told her she made a wrong turn. It was apparent the students were trying to be helpful. Mm, okay. And her response was not acceptable or conducive to our district values. The substitute driver has since been placed on administrative leave as well. Since 2021, school districts across the country, including in Utah, have been struggling to find enough bus drivers. So they're already scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're getting bus drivers with bad tempers. Next up, convicts. Violent offenders. Can't wait to see how that uh, plays out. Yes, they've been struggling to find enough bus drivers similar to shortages of employees in many other professions and industries. So at least for the short term, you're just going to have to put up with your asshole bus drivers going the wrong way. Uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Love to hear from you, freaks. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I am all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash distortedview show. 
Don't forget, we've got that great Discord where all the freaks are hanging out, chatting, commiserating, uh, sharing links and stuff, uh, videos and all that crap. Uh, there's a link on the main navigation bar over there at distortedview.com. All right, let's check in with a few freaks here. Hey, Tim. Uh, yeah, you've been talking about like a voter, you know, um, uh, you know, voter like misrepresentation and voter fraud and all that kind of stuff. I've been talking about voter fraud on the show. I I don't recall that, but okay, if you say so, you know, I've got a shitty memory, so maybe. And it's really bad when people say that, like, oh, you know, the election wasn't, you know, it wasn't good. Um, so I would like to call out Nancy Pelosi, uh, Amy Klobuchar, and Hillary Clinton, because they all said that the 2016 election was illegitimate and that Donald Trump was not the elected president. So, you know, just go ahead and put that on your show. Okay, bye, buddy. All right, well, there you go. Hillary Clinton back in 2016 said that the election wasn't legitimate and Donald Trump is not really the president. So it's the, it's the same exact thing that Trump did, minus the insurrection part. Not exactly the same, but it's very close. If I did not mention that back in 2016, I am so sorry. Distorted View regrets the error. Hello, Tammy Boo. It's me, Pirate Barbie. Hello. Um, I may or may not have called about this already. I don't really know, but you were talking on an older episode about how people, you know, they get uh, offered money to bump flights and things like that. Yeah. And um, that's what my ex-husband and I used to do all the time. And that's how we were able to travel so much. Um, because we would bump ourselves on flights, we would take later ones or whatever. Yeah. And they would often offer uh, points or money or, you know, whatever. I think there was even one time we got a hotel stay out of it kind of thing. What's the most money you ever got for being bumped? Um, so, you know, it, it, it was nice because we are... Hey, I asked you a question. Why aren't you responding? Didn't, didn't. Again, it's like I'm having conversations with real people here. Pay for our plane tickets. And people are like, oh, we don't understand how you can afford to travel so much. It's like, well, because <laughs> the airlines are basically paying for it. Yeah. Um, the only problem with that is got to be kind of flexible, right? But they did. We would do similar Time things with, with hotels and, and, and stuff as well. Um, you know, they, they, we went to Florida quite a few times. You know what I would do? I would bring a little vial of blood with me, right? And then uh, when I got to the hotel room, I would just uh, dump the vial of blood all over, like, the bed sheets, and then complain to Stabby, like, oh, my God! What, did somebody get shot in here? This is disgusting, right? And then you get a, you get a free room out of that, um, probably. You know, just to hang out or whatever, go to Disney mostly. Mm-hmm. But we would, um, we would do, like, the timeshare things, and we would do... Uh, you know, we would bump flights, and so you know, I mean, it's right. kind of cheating the system, but it's not. I mean, these things are being offered, and so why not take advantage of it kind of thing? It's just like that Chipotle hack I was reading about, right? Like, it's technically uh, not illegal to do, not wrong. It's probably frowned upon. You know, the one that you hear about the thing about the, the thing about the thing? <laughs> Some guy figured out if you just get, like, a side... Of all the different uh, Chipotle items, like uh, salsa and lettuce, and, and I don't know, whatever, and then add uh, a, a tortilla, then you could you basically uh, build your own burrito for like three dollars. Everything just comes in little side cups, and you gotta like add it yourself to, to make the burrito. I don't know. I I, saw, I heard about that on TikTok. <laughs> and so we would we would we would okay. travel all kinds. All of right, places. good for you. Good Christ. I don't know why I so suddenly turned on her, going on and on about her great life, all her vacation she gets to go on. <laughs> hey, Timothy, it's Meowness. Hey, Meowness. Um, so I just listened to the part, the, 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 the clip that you just played of that Australian that was talking shit about the U.S. and ate one of those packy chips. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the one, yeah, I think it was on Friday. Maybe it was Thursday's episode. I don't know. He was eating those uh, really, really... Uh, the one hot challenge chips. Um, I bought the one a hot chip challenge bag of those uh, back in 2018, and um, yeah, I experienced. I don't know how many of how many different kinds there are, but I had the ghost pepper ones, and the I ate like three of them, and they fucked me up like the next morning, like I've never experienced. But then, like, 
I had this weird craving to go back and try them again, and I actually finished the bag. Do they come in bags, though? The way I understand it is it's, it's literally you, you buy one chip. It, it, it's like this little cardboard box, uh, and, and inside there's one chip, and it's supposed to be very, very excruciatingly hot. And it ruined my morning again, but it was that was a good bag of chips. Um, fun fact, I bought those at Jungle Gym. Oh! Yeah. Uh, one of my buddies out in Cincinnati showed me that place, and, dude, you talked about Jungle Gyms like it was... Some basic thing that, like, oh, yeah, we got this kind of interesting place out here. <laughs> Dude, you got to talk more about that place, man. Yeah. Like, you could get more people to... I guess I'm just getting used to it, because I've been here for, what, four or five years? <laughs> Go to fucking Cincinnati. If they talked about jungle gyms, that place is a destination, dude. Yeah, it is an insane, huge grocery. It's more than a grocery store. He's right. It is a destination. It's this giant, huge place that has like every fucking food imaginable from different countries they have different uh, aisles of different more than aisles like sections of different countries a whole like uh, section of store that has just japanese products or just you know wh- whatever uh, like mediterranean italian and there's like all these displays i mean it's very elaborately done as a matter of fact they have a fucking um monorail outside of the store it goes all around the store. It, it's normally not operation. I mean, it works. You, there are times when they will give you a ride in the monorail, but typically it's not like something that's, that's always on. But they, I mean, it, it is insane. I'll try next time I go there. I'll take pictures or video or something. Uh, I actually did. I tell you guys this that I messaged Jungle Gyms recently because I uh, I love Surge Soda, <laughs> and they brought it. Coca Cola brought it back in 2014. I want to say. It was very exciting. They brought it back in cans, and then for a while you could get it at Burger King in the freestyle machine, but that tasted like asshole. That wasn't good. The cans were where it was at, though. That's the Surge you know and love and you remember from the 90s. Surge, of course, was like a competitor to Mountain Dew at the time. Anyway, the country of origin, Surge actually comes from Norway. Uh, Norway was the first pl- place to, to offer it. They called the product Urge. The soda was called Urge in Norway. It's still being sold there. Uh, but Surge, <laughs> the American version, has once again disappeared from the shelves. Coca-Cola is fucking me over. I don't know what their plans are, if they're going to re-release it again or what. But I thought, you know what? We've got, I've got this incredible resource here in Cincinnati, Jungle Gyms, who's able to get uh, just about any food from anywhere. And I, uh, I messaged them and I said, look... Uh, I explained what Surge was and uh, the, the Urge and the Norway and yada, yada, yada. Could we import it from Norway? Now, normally when I do shit like this, I never hear back from the companies. And I do complain a lot. This time, though, I did get a response just a few days after I uh, I wrote it. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, uh, it's not looking good. Coca-Cola, they're very strict when it comes to their products and... Jungle Gyms works with various distributors in other countries and here in America, and no one with connections to Coca-Cola can get this product. They're very protective. They don't want anyone importing this stuff from another country. Now, you can find it, uh, you know, uh, people in Norway (laughs) selling it on eBay for uh, an insane amount of money. But as for like retailers, it's not going to happen. So our only hope to bring Surge back is to uh, get on Coca-Cola's case and um, uh, make them start making that again. Timmy needs his sweet, sweet diabetes juice. But yeah, I uh, I totally respect Jungle Gyms. They at least, you know, they, and it wasn't just like a form letter saying like, yeah, we can't do this. They, they took the time. They wrote a couple paragraphs. It was They were very nice, and they explained uh, why, unfortunately, uh, they, they probably can't get uh, urge for me. So that was kind of nice. But yeah, Jungle Gyms is great. It's quite an experience. If you do come down to Cincinnati, it's one of the uh, the few interesting places that I found. A grocery store full of junk food. All right. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the program. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206 Oh, God. Is it? Oh, God. A combination of horse penises and blood thinners would be lethal. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. Again, if you'd like to hear it, sign up for the Sideshow, superfreaksideshow.com. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me.
me. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.